electricity networks worldwide see dramatic increases in power demand. Solar and wind power capacities are being added in large quantities globally every day. At the same time, digitization deeply impacts the energy sector, connecting everybody to everything, with many new market opportunities. Smart market designs help to seize these opportunities, FI with prosumer models. But there are also risks, such as new monopolies. How can these new paradigms be combined to accelerate the energy transition? And that indeed is our topic. And I think I hardly need to remind you, ladies and gentlemen, that intermittent distributed renewable energy sources do pose a challenge to electricity markets that were created decades ago for a world powered by fossil fuels. So how does this industry move from predictable generation models to a far more variable grid that's responsive to supply and demand and the environment? Digital technologies, as we were just reminded by the film, are a very key part of that solution and actors across the value chain are moving to adopt them to facilitate and scale up their efforts. Coherent policy signals will be absolutely critical. So in this panel, we wanna look at the state of the market and assess both benefits and risks how can smart market design maximize opportunities for green business models? And what risks and challenges are involved also in the digitalization of energy systems? And we've got an, ex an outstanding panel. I'm going to introduce them in just a moment, but I do want to take a look at how you're responding to the first of our audience polls, we asked you which objects and words come to your mind when thinking of smart energy market designs, and you're already uh, avidly answering that question. I'm going to give you a little bit uh, more time to do so while I introduce our panelists, and then we're going to come back and look at what the main words and terms are that you consider important. So I will now keep our introductions really short to maximize our time for discussion. Discussion. And uh, it's a great pleasure to welcome the Vice Minister in Vietnam's Ministry of Industry and Trade. He's Dang Hoang An, and he was formerly President and CEO of Vietnam's National Load Dispatch Center for Electricity. It's also great to have with us Antonella Battaglini. She is CEO of the Renewable Grid, Renewables Grid Initiative, which is a collaboration of NGOs and TSOs from across Europe promoting sustainable grid development. Great to have you with us. Also very pleased to welcome Stefan Kapfera. He is CEO of 50 Hertz Transmission Grid, which GmbH, which is a TSO with one of the highest renewable energy shares in the world. And finally, uh, very uh, pleased that Jojo Hubbard can join us. She is co-founder and CEO of Electron, a startup offering a digital platform connecting energy users across multiple markets and networks. So let's just quickly go back to that word cloud and, uh, and take a look at what our, our audience thinks are the most important words and terms that occur to them. Decentralization, optimized grids, prosumer, microgrids, demand flexibility, smart grid. And the smaller print has everything from smart metering to sector coupling, real-time pricing, uh, flexibility, obviously absolutely crucial here, sufficiency, and more. So bearing all that in mind, dear panel, let me now ask all of you, um, what challenges you see as posed by the current market model and where you see the advantages of a market design that in fact facilitates application of digital technologies. And I'll start with uh, the Vietnamese vice minister. Please, sir, go ahead. And by the way, dear panel, as always, we are super short on time. Our overall window for this panel is 30 minutes, so I'm going to be asking you to keep your remarks truly brief, two to three minutes maximum, if you would. Thank you so much. Please go ahead, Mr. Hong An. 
Good afternoon, Madam Crane and ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to attend this panel today about the smart market de design for the global energy transition. In, in Vietnam, we see the introduction of the power market and, and energy market. It's one of the major tools to facilitate the, the involvement of the the independent power producer and also the the end end user consumer of electricity to uh, in the uh, to power system. So the Vietnam, the government of Vietnam, we have uh, uh, approved a roadmap for establishing the power market in Vietnam since uh, the year 2014. And uh, basically, we should introduce the power market in Vietnam in three stages like in other countries. The first thing is going to be the generation competitive uh, power market and then we, now we have the the wholesale power market and uh, the next period, uh, next stage should be the region power market. By introducing the power market we should have the, we enable the, uh, the independent power producer to uh, deeper penetrate into the power system. And also, we we provide step by step the the choice for the customer where the the eligible customer they might select the uh, supplier, and then we at the end of the of this, uh, of the journey, the wholesale the retail customer like a household like an end user they they might select their their supplier as well. So this. Uh, Roadmap uh, is uh, very important for, and it is going on in line with the power sector restructuring process, which has been uh, seven years ago. So, um, in line with that, so we also have a, a roadmap for the energy market, and uh, we are aiming at the target to have also the competitive market for the primary fuel for the um, for the national economy and also the power sector. So I think the the um, with this uh, smart market design, so it's very important tools to to facilitate uh, the 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 penetration of the and then we to draw the investment from the private sector into power se into power sector and also energy sector. So like in other country, normally we have in the past the the national utility such as just that the uh, vertical integrated utility and now we we are processing uh, with the uh, unbundling process where the generation the transmission and distribution can be unbundled and we introducing the the um, bidding process for generation so i think the the together with that we need a, a digital system such as the um, and sophisticated IT system, like uh, for the dispatching, for the market clearing, and also for billing. So I think the um, the um, the smart grid roadmap also has been approved by the government of Vietnam, and now we we are also moving to the micro grid and also the the uh, uh, demand side management process, and. Uh, Thank you. When today, when with the deeper penetration of the renewable energy uh, into the power uh, system in Vietnam, and we see that the without the sophisticated uh, uh, hardware and software uh, means we could not uh, implement the successful the the power market and uh, and as well the, and also the together with that the we need you know the really really sophisticated and modern system for the dispatcher, for the system market operator, and the and the management to to manage the uh, power grid. Thank and uh, uh, one of the success of Vietnam when we introduce the power market is that we in, have in, reduced the portion generated of generation generated produced by national utility from 100% in the past to the 46%. Uh, now, so I think the in the in the future, so the portion of the private sector power producer uh, producers can can be increased also. Can, and I think that that's very consistent uh, policy for Vietnam government. 
And, thank, you. Uh, thank you very uh, much. I think that, that we are going to lie if it are the countries in this field. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Uh, let me go now to Antonella Battaglini, because as I mentioned, you work across Europe. So I'd like to hear about what challenges you're seeing when you look at different countries and power markets. To what extent are energy grids and markets able to absorb growing quantities of renewable power and what needs to happen? Thank you very much for having me here and uh, for your question. So, um, of course, there are huge differences from one region to another, and I only refer to Europe, although um, there are similarities also with other developed markets. Um, what is important to stress is that uh, um, markets uh, and energy infrastructure need to be developed hand in hand. Um, the um, increasing shares of variable renewable energy sources in the system indeed poses some challenges, but also uh, offers plenty of opportunities. Uh, what I would like to stress is that today, uh, there is a clear need to expand and reinforce the electricity grids at all voltage levels because um, uh, many of the variable renewables are also connected at the low voltage level, but these quantities of renewable energy sources have to be transported from one area to another area, generally from where they are generated to where they are consumed. Um, at the same time, a system which is increasingly based on renewables, of course, it requires different mechanisms, including market mechanisms. These have to be, um, the markets have to be uh, updated and uh, also redesigned to actually uh, leverage and enable uh, flexibility, all type of flexibility will be needed already a lot of flexibility is needed today and the, by adding more and more renewables flexibility is going to be probably the most valuable resource that we have and this should be reflected in the markets um, additionally i would like to mention the fact that uh, um, today uh, neither grid um, infrastructure no market designs are fully uh, representing and in, um, yeah fully representing and considering all the potential options that uh, can be leveraged by distributed resources. We still have some difficulties in um, modeling distributed resources, and this is something that has to uh, change very quickly. Um, distributed resources, and so not only distributed generation, but also distributed flexibility, um, are important elements, not only for keeping the uh, system stable, to decarbonize quickly, but also to increase public acceptance, where there is a very clear um, demand, especially in Europe, but not only, for um, participation of communities and citizens into this energy transition. So um, the, the key challenges that I see is really uh, linked to timing. We need to speed up the build-up of energy infrastructure. We need to plan it in a collaborative way, and we need to um, improve the markets to reward new products, including flexibility products. Thank you very much. And Thank let me take uh, those remarks take, and go uh, straight over to Stefan uh, Kapfera. Uh, from your perspective, as one of the TSOs with the largest share of renewable uh, green power, what do you see as the challenges and the solutions to acquire the kind of flexibility that Antonella Battaglini was just talking about? She said, we're not making the most of the opportunities that are there. How can digitalization change that? Yeah, I think there are three topics, Melinda. And the first one is to use the existing grid infrastructure as efficient as possible. And we all know that there are some periods 
over the year, over the daily use of the grid infrastructure where it is not really efficiently used. Uh, and their digitization can help us. Dynamic line rating where we have a lot of data about the temperature and the temperature is of course a limiting factor for the use of the grid infrastructure is a relevant aspect. Uh, second topic is sector coupling. And I was a little bit surprised, Melinda, that uh, this word was so small written in the word cloud because obviously uh, sector coupling is an extremely relevant aspect in the future. Uh, power to heat technologies, power to gas technologies to produce green hydrogen for energy intensive industry will play a key role in a situation where the gap between production of renewable energy and at the same time demand is lower will be needed. And the last aspect, and it was mentioned of course by Antonella, uh, is the managing of the flexibility. And their situation is changing now very fast because uh, in a few years we will have in our control area in uh, the eastern part of Germany millions of electric vehicles. We will see millions of heat pumps. Uh, storage capacities at home are becoming cheaper and cheaper. So what is uh, needed now for managing these kind of flexibility in the future is to find the right balance between real-time price signals which give an incentive to people to use these cheap electricity if it is uh, in the market and to reduce consumption if the electricity is more expensive. And on the other hand of this balance, we need a situation that we still can guarantee the stability of the system, our balancing obligation, which will be, of course, also needed in a decentralized or more decentralized and uh, extremely complex system in the future. Thank you very much, Stefan Kaffra. And as a big fan of sector coupling, let me just say perhaps it got bigger uh, as we went away from the word cloud because, in fact, a lot of the audience still uh, was voting. Uh, so we'll take another look at that uh, perhaps later on. Uh, but let me go now to Jojo Hubbard. And uh, for you as a pioneering startup in this sector, which market rules and structures do you think are most in need of change and what are the most promising solutions for getting that change? Melinda, hi, thanks very much everyone for having me. Um, so I think it goes directly to what uh, Stefan was just saying about moving to more real-time price signals, to more granular price signals, but also crucially to more local price signals. So one of the big winners on that word cloud was decentralization with an S and a Z. So I think it might have been even bigger if we'd all agreed on spelling. Um, put quite simply, today's power markets and price signals are too national and imprecise to incentivize the optimization of renewable generation and network capacity at a local level. So we've got trillions of, of euros being spent on upgrading uh, and extending local networks for all of these new uh, assets connecting um, to enable all those new kind of sector coupling type business models. Um, and, and, you know, ev every heat pump, uh, uh, battery, electric vehicle charging station going in is going in essentially API native. It's, it's able to respond to uh, quite granular price signals. It's able to respond to these kind of near real time type markets. Um, so that type of flexibility just needs to see those pricing signals. And, and I, think, I, I think we're seeing some of this uh, being introduced. We're seeing um, uh, Article 32 in the European Energy Directive requiring local optimization markets as of this year. We're seeing a lot in the UK and Australia and now North America as well. North America about resilience, but we are absolutely going to have to seed these local markets um, and coordinate them with national markets in order to optimize uh, uh, probably about 30% of the generation and, and, and probably the majority of utilization that's going to be happening at a local level. Thank you very much for that. I'd like to do a second really short round of questions that we t allows us to take a bit of a deeper dive and get even more concrete. But I've also got my eye on the clock. We have about 
10 minutes left. So I'm going to ask everybody to be super brief, if you would, with your answers to these questions. But let me start uh, again with the Vice Minister, uh, Mr. Huang An, and ask you to talk very concretely about what you are doing in Vietnam to get that kind of flexibility that everybody in the panel has emphasized is so important, especially bringing in smaller decentralized producers into the grid. So please go ahead and, and sir, if you would, under two minutes in length. Thank you. Yeah, I have to admit that we are facing a lot of challenges with the deeper penetration of renewable energy. And uh, we are still designing the measure how to can we can adapt the better of the bigger volume of the renewable energy to the power system. And one, one of the challenges is to, to ensure the safe operation of the power system uh, in, in case of Vietnam, we, we have almost standalone system, power system and that all, we don't have you know, the system-wide uh, interconnection with the neighboring countries and that, uh, that uh, the neighboring country of power system, they could not support to Vietnam. That's really different compared with the European system. So that's the that that first one. And the second one is uh, in terms of the market rule is uh, how to adopt the the market role at, with the, the priority of the of the renewable energy uh, power producer is one of the another the challenge for Vietnam. So that's really a lot of thing we need to do. Thank you very much. And I will now uh, ask the others to also share concrete cases and examples, if you would, about adapting to uh, for a smart market design. And uh, perhaps, first of all, to uh, Stefan Kapfer on, uh, on what you are doing at 50 Hertz to um, really accommodate the green power surge and the rise of digitalization. I think you're on mute, Stefan. Stefan. Sorry for that, Melinda. Thanks. Uh, three very clear answers to this uh, question. And uh, behind me, you can see our target, 100% uh, covering of electricity demand in our control area in 2032. This will only work with uh, more flexibility in the system. First project, uh, together with local utilities in the north of uh, Germany, we organize power to heat for district heating in uh, some uh, local communities in this area. Second aspect, decarbonizing the energy intensive industry to very concrete uh, projects with steel industry in Hamburg, with chemical industry in the middle of Germany. Both industries are interested in uh, green hydrogen because they are hard to abate by direct electrification. So we uh, cooperate to uh, organize and to establish electrolyzers in these areas. And the third aspect, two very concrete pilot projects with uh, one uh, manufacturer of heat pumps in Germany and one uh, car manufacturer with electric vehicles to look at these uh, millions of decentralized uh, capacity of uh, storaging uh, electricity in the future. That's something with a mid and long term perspective, but this will be extremely relevant from my perspective as well. Thank you very much. And uh, to Antonella Battaglini, do you have a case study or two that you could share with us where you have seen a very effective use of new technologies to get at some of the challenges that we're talking about? I'm also bearing in mind asking you for these uh, case studies that BETD, among other things, is all about best practices. So if you have a couple of best practices that you could cite, that would be very helpful, I think. I would like to mention the work that we have started to do with large consumers. Uh, we recently engaged with uh, Google in particular because of their 24-7 visions, uh, which is, in my point of view, a revolutionary approach. Uh, Google has moved from their commitment to be um, fully uh, renewable uh, into being 24-7 uh, uh, fully decarbonized. This means that there is a, a physical component attached to that. And what we are working on is uh, uh, trying to cluster large um, consumers uh, which shared um, similar objectives and uh, to figure out what exactly is needed from the grid to help 
uh, achieve these objectives, but also what these large consumers can offer to the grid in terms of stability and uh, security. Uh, we are at the very beginning of this uh, process and uh, uh, there is more work to do than what we have done in the past. Um, but generally, uh, I think this is uh, very much needed. Thank you very much. And I'll go now to uh, Jojo Hubbard again with uh, the request, if you have one, for a case study that showcases some of the advantages of startup digital technologies in addressing, uh, in addressing the need for flexibility, decentralization, uh, uh, and so on. Thank you. Thanks very much. So I just want to give one example of uh, Marketplace Electron is supporting in the Orkney Islands. Um, this is a uh, marketplace for curtailment. So wind farms that are being constrained off the grid because there's not enough network capacity are able to pay uh, local flexibility to either use more power or produce less in that period um, and, and essentially create space on the networks for those wind farms to be uh, uh, taken off curtailment. So what does that mean? It means everyone wins. It means consumers is paid to use power. It means more renewables are be, uh, being brought onto the grid. Um, it's happening in real time and it's a physical market. So it's actually affecting how power flows. It's one of the very, very few examples of that globally, if not one of the only where that's happening. And I think some of the challenges around that, are that it has to be super granular, it has to be real time, it has to be quite differentiated kind of region to region. Um, and then you have to start thinking about national local market coordination. Thank you very much. Very interesting uh, indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, our speakers have all been so disciplined that we actually have time for one more audience question to you. So let me go to our second uh, audience, audience question for this panel, and it's this. Can you imagine producing power on your own roof and selling the excess power with online tools? And uh, let me ask the audience to vote now, and maybe we're going to have time to get a really quick response from our speakers. So um, can, we, can we get the question up on screen, dear technicians? Second audience question. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we are, of course, at a, at a renewables conference, but let's give a few more people time to vote. Maybe there will still be other votes coming in that don't um, have such a resounding positive. Yeah, okay, we have 3% now saying no, but I'm going to give us about 20 seconds more, and then I'm just going to ask uh, our speakers for their take on this. So a few more no votes as the numbers mount, but the overwhelming majority of people answering that poll, and I realize that we are uh, definitely seeing uh, uh, a result of the pool of those who are voting and the fact that many people uh, attending this conference are very, very interested in the green energy transition and renewables. But maybe I can just ask all of you, are you seeing a change in public sentiment surrounding prosumerism? Um, are you seeing more and more willingness among citizens to become uh, decentralized producers? Straight down the, uh, the list of speakers, starting with uh, the Vietnamese Vice Minister Huang An. Are you seeing a change in Vietnam, sir? Yes, I think the, um, the uh Ch shifting to the prosumer, and that's one of the uh, tendency in Vietnam also. And now we are promoting the lot, the uh, rooftop uh, power producer. So that is one one of the type of the pro of the prosumer. And uh, I think that with the decentralized system is one of the I think the, the future is the future. But we need we have to manage the that process so that we can ensure the safety operation of the whole system with. Thank you. Antonella Battaglini, are you seeing a sea change in public attitudes? The, the appetite is uh, very, very big all across Europe, uh, but the barriers uh, continue to be quite high, and so penetration is still limited. We need to find solutions quickly to enable this um, possibility for all consumers. Although we should always keep in mind that we need to optimize the entire system. So that will need some limitations. Thank you very much. And Stefan Kapfer, what are you seeing out there? Yeah, 
obviously, uh, Melinda, the trend is very clear, but I think at the moment, uh, self-consumption is becoming more relevant. And the reason for that is that taxes, fees, and levies are not very attractive to sell these uh, renewable energies to other peers. So this is something we have to work on. Thank you. And Jojo Hubbard, uh, over there uh, and in the various markets that you are, are working in, are you seeing uh, a major change in attitudes? Yes, absolutely. And it's no surprise that since people can generate their own power that they can see a world in which they're allowed to sell it. The fact is, I also think we're a little way off that right now. I think there are three stages of this transition. First stage, we've done, get more renewables on the ground. Second stage, did digitalization for optimization and ensure safety of the system. We're doing that now. We've got to do that first before the kind of phase three where this really kicks in, which is these differentiated different, you know, digital consumer service models. Thank you so much. Antonella Battadini, I'd like very much to ask you to quickly wrap things up for us, if you would. Can you share what you see as the guiding principles for smart market, power market design, and perhaps also sum up the concrete advantages of digitalization for both small and large power producers and users? So let me maybe summarize with three points, uh, and I'll start with the market ones. Um, we need real-time pricing signals. These have to be as granular as possible because only by implementing these price signals with a high level of granularity, we can develop local solutions, which will be an optimized way of dealing with the growth of renewables. Uh, digitalization can definitely help not only to optimize uh, and leverage our resources, but also optimize the use of the assets that we have already in place. And finally, sector coupling is an important element and will highly contribute to the decarbonization process. So with this, I think it's a short summary of the conversation. Thank you. Indeed it is, uh, but uh, a very uh, fitting one. So many thanks uh, to you, Antonella Battaglini. Many thanks to you, Stefan Kaffere from uh, 50 Hertz. Many thanks to the Vice Minister from Vietnam, Mr. Huang An, and uh, also to Jojo Hubbard representing the startup perspective on smart market design. I think you've all made it very clear that, uh, that our word cloud was pretty accurate in highlighting some of the challenges, but also undoubtedly some of the opportunities uh, here in this space. So let's go back and look at that one word cloud one more time, if we can. Can we get that back on screen one more time to just take a very quick look? Not that one. Can we get the other one that we started out with, uh, dear technicians? I'm sorry, I'm surprising them with this request, but we wanted to see, among other things, whether sector coupling got any bigger. Um, I'm not seeing the slide yet, so maybe we're going to have difficulties getting that. Then hopefully we will be able, all of us, to see it uh, online when, uh, when our conference has concluded. So many thanks to our speakers for this very, very thought-provoking and, uh, and interesting interaction.